the disease today we are going to discuss is about sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia is a blood disorder which can be inherited from parents to the offspring this blood disorder is because of abnormal hemoglobin or sickle hemoglobin hemoglobin is a protein in rbcs that carries oxygen throughout the body when a person for this gene have two recessive form of the genes then the disease is called as sickle cell anemia this recessive form of the gene was reported by learners and his group in the year 1949 this is mainly because of the production of abnormal protein and the production of abnormal protein is mainly because of the mutation happening in the 6th amino acid of the beta polypeptide chain where glutamic acid is replaced by valine it was first discovered or it was first reported by vernon and gram in the year 1956 about the abnormal polymerization of the dehoxy hemoglobin sickle was elaborately explained by the year 1970 This picture depicts about the shape of the RBCs in the normal condition as well as in the mutated condition. The normal condition, the RBCs are circular shape because the beta polypeptide chain in the sixth position has the amino acid glutamine. Sorry, glutamic acid. But in the case of the mutated condition, the disease condition, glutamic acid is replaced by valine, which leads to clumped hemoglobin clumped hemoglobin leads to the sickle shape of the rbcs when we see the inheritance pattern of this disease this disease mainly can be seen in the individuals when the offsprings are arising from the parents who are heterozygous for the trait heterozygous meaning to say both the parents carry both the forms of the genes of this particular disease that is they carry the dominant as well as the recessive form they do not actually have the symptoms but they carry the genes that is they carry the trait of this disease of the offsprings 25% of the offspring is likely to get this disease that means to say if the gene for this hemoglobins are the both allelic forms are in the recessive form it is at that time the rbcs are sickle shaped and their oxygen carrying capacity reduces which leads to severe anemic conditions the gene gets mutated that has been already informed but where is the gene present The gene coding for the beta polypeptide of the hemoglobin protein is present on the chromosome 11, the short arm of the chromosome 11, and it is at the position 15.4. The condition, as already told, it is an autosomal recessive pattern that indicates that both the copies of the gene should be in the recessive form if they have to carry the disease. the parents of an individual with an autosomal recessive condition each carry one copy of the mutated gene but they do not show any signs and symptoms of the condition this this diagrammatic representation speaks about what happens to the protein structure of the hemoglobin in a normal individual the hemoglobin chain the sixth amino acid is glutamine so the primary structure being the linear form later the secondary and the tertiary structure is intact in such a way to form the hemoglobin protein to alpha polypeptides and to beta polypeptides they clump together and form a hemoglobin protein here the molecules they do not associate with one another but they will try to bring about the carrying of the oxygen efficiently on the other side in a disease condition we see that the sixth amino acid is valine 
the sixth amana asset line try to bring about the chain the secondary and tertiary structures where they try to expose the hydrophobic region of the beta subunit this the hydrophobic region of the of the beta subunit they will try to bring about the interaction in such a way they try to crystallize the protein in the form of fiber thereby decreasing its capacity to carry oxygen when this is done they will it will try to bring about the symptoms the symptoms and signs vary from people to people following are the symptoms of an individual suffering from sickle cell anemia and it varies as follows anemia the first condition is anemia as we all know the rbc's life span in our body is 120 days but whereas the sickle rbc life span is 10 to 20 days so it so happens there is no good carrying capacity of oxygen there by no energy and thus the individual suffers fatigue the next symptom is in the form of epidosis of pain where pain develops when sickle shaped rbcs try to flow but the flowing is obstructed through the tiny blood vessels and thereby what happens is that it results in the pain in the bones and this pain is also known as vvc vaso occlusive painful crisis the third symptom speaks about the painful swelling of hands and feet where what happens is that once again there is blocking in the flow of the blood to the hands and the feet and thereby we can see the swelling of the hands and the feet sickle shaped rbc's life span is 10 to 20 days after they die it is a spleen which tries to wear out the rbcs now since rbcs are dying regularly sickle rbcs are dying regularly spleen gets damaged the spleen gets damaged it so happens the individual is prone to many frequent infections as spleen is a very very important secondary lymphoid organ which helps in fighting the infections the next symptom is the form of delayed growth where we see that the red blood cells they actually provide the oxygen and nutrients for the growth shortage of healthy red blood cells results in delayed growth of the infants and in children and it tries to bring about delay puberty in teenagers